I'm Chris Martin. And I'm Jerry Herb. We're getting down to the brass tacks and hard facts of flow testing. Many times when you're in a test mode like this, you hear reference to the 1962 standard. It's an NFPA standard that's designed to cover the care, use, inspection, service and replacement of hose, nozzles, couplings, and appliances. The standard might be used when you're in testing evaluating for hose and nozzles. It might be used when you're setting up pump discharge pressures or testing brand new equipment before you can put it into service. There's a portion of that standard that covers systems testing, and that's where we're gonna go deep today. And primarily, the entire system is normally measured by pressure. And pressure in this case is nothing other than the energy that's delivering a flow. So if our objective is to achieve a target flow and test our system to make sure that we're getting that flow, we have to get a little bit more flow-minded as opposed to pressure-minded. This type of flow test will also help you identify such hose issues as delaminated hose, where the inner liner separates from the outer jacket. This won't show up on a hydrostatic test. Today we're gonna to test 200 foot of inch and three quarter hose. There's a couple different instruments we're gonna to need to measure flow and pressure. The first will be an inline flow meter. We'll put that on the intake side of the engine. So we have 50 foot of two and a half coming off the hydrant into the flow meter and then another 50 feet going into the suction intake. This way the flow meter is now on the ground. Everybody can see the results. We wanna open that suction intake fully. We don't wanna open our tank to pump. Basically, we're gonna send the water into our pump, speed it up, and send it out the other side. By putting it on the intake side, it does a couple things for us. First of all, I don't have to keep moving the flow meter if I wanna check multiple discharges. Second of all, there will be friction loss in the flow meter. It is an appliance. So by putting it on the intake side, the friction loss is accounted there and not my attack package. Within the 200 foot of the inch and three quarter, we're gonna put three inline pressure gauges. One of those will be right at the engine where the hose connects to the swivel. The next one will be 100 feet away, right in the middle of the 200 foot, and the last one will be right behind the nozzle. We're gonna gather a whole bunch of numbers and we'll break those down for you of what they mean, the impact they might have on your fire attack package, and different friction losses and flows and how they correlate. Now we're gonna look at the pump panel and start getting some of the numbers. The first number we wanna look at is our big gauge, what we call the engine pressure. The next one will be the discharge pressure or the little gauge. Best practice is to always pump to the little gauge. There could be a time though where mistakenly somebody might look at the big gauge. The big question is, is there any difference in between the two? In this case, yes, there's a five PSI difference between our big gauge and our little gauge. So depending on which one I look at, I can already have a five PSI difference in my attack package. The next gauge we're gonna look at is the one we put here at the chick sand swivel, right in the cross leg. We've supported it with some webbing so we can see the gauge easier and helps with a little bit of kink. This gauge is reading 120 PSI. So we take 130 minus 120 and we now have a 10 PSI friction loss in our plumbing. A couple different things can impact you on the plumbing side of the system. First off is did you put a spec in for how you wanted the rig plumb? In many cases, people don't take advantage of that. So you might have hard pipe weld you might have flexible pipe that's put together with victolic fittings. They're going to have different performance with respect to friction loss. Another thing that's very significant is a lot of rigs have a front bumper pull. If you have a 200 foot jump line at the front of the rig and pump it the same as a 200 foot pre-connect directly over the pump casing, there could be significant pipe loss in its travel to the front of the bumper. It has to travel over the axle. There's many different elbows that could be involved. It can be significant. 20, 25 PSI loss. We're gonna be documenting all of these numbers as we go, and we'll be breaking those down for you. We like to use these large post-it notes on the side of the rig or a big whiteboard. That way everybody on the drill ground is involved and it becomes an inclusive drill and not just a couple running around with a clipboard. So as we transition now out to the delivery end of our system, we're capturing our flow with the flow meter and we hit the next gauge. This is at 100 foot. So the difference between this gauge and the chick sand swivel gauge gives us friction loss in the first 100 feet of our system. The difference between the 100 foot gauge and the gauge at the base of the nozzle gives us friction loss in the second 100 feet of our system. It also gives us base nozzle pressure. 
Here we're utilizing a smooth bore. We pitoed to ensure we were at 50 PSI. If we were using a combination nozzle, we would need that gauge to confirm we were at 50 PSI based nozzle pressure. There's a couple different ways to measure nozzle pressure. First thing we have to figure out is what type of nozzle we're utilizing. In this case, we're utilizing a smooth bore, so we can use a pitot gauge to measure tip pressure to make sure we're at the flow objective that we're monitoring. In this case, the team will use the pitot and put it into the center of the stream of our 7.8s. The pitot gauge is designed to go in at 90 degrees in the center of the stream. The velocity of the water is the most in the center of the stream. Put the blade about half the distance away from the face of the tip size. So in this case, it's a 7 eighths, so we're roughly 3 eighths of an inch off. We take a look at our gauge. We're at 50 PSI, it corresponds to our flow. We prefer using a digital gauge as opposed to an older liquid-filled analog gauge or gauges that can be impacted by atmosphere. They're much more accurate. If, in fact, we were measuring nozzle pressure on a combination nozzle, the team would have to transfer away from the pitot, which won't work on a broken stream, and will utilize the line gauge behind the nozzle to ensure the combination nozzle is at 50 PSI base nozzle pressure. In this case, we're utilizing a 160 at 50 combination nozzle, which will show the same flow as our 7 eighths. Gauge is showing 50 PSI base nozzle pressure corresponds with 160 gallons a minute on our flow meter. Measuring nozzle pressure is a critical component in the testing of the entire system. It's done differently depending on the type of equipment that you use. You have to make sure that you've got the equipment needed to do it accurately. Now that we've gotten all this data, we need to make sense of the numbers. So we have it all written here on the sheet. I've got the nozzle, the engine pressure, discharge pressure, rig, the 100 foot mark, nozzle pressure flow, and nozzle reaction. So let's just pay attention to the plumbing for a minute. The big gauge was 135, the little gauge was 130. You could take a different colored marker and write the difference between those two and it becomes very obvious what it is. The rig is where it came off of the swivel. So if I were to, for example, be looking at the big gauge when pumping, I would be losing 15 PSI just in my plumbing. The difference between the rig and the first 100 foot mark is 35 PSI, and the 100 foot mark and the nozzle pressure was also 35 PSI. So that tells me the friction loss per 100 feet of this particular attack hose is 35 PSI per 100 foot. It's valuable information to know when building a pump chart, for example. So what I can do is then just keep adding nozzles to this list, testing them then in the same way. Whether I want to try different nozzle and hose combinations, I want to try different discharges, or even two and a half. I would lay out two and a half exactly the same way, and essentially I create a funnel. So I want to have to test a whole bunch of data points to really drill down and see exactly what it is that I need. The last point of data is the nozzle reaction. We get that from the Brass Tacks Hard Facts App Calculator, where you can just punch it in and get that number. The lower, the better. Depending on what type of conclusion you're looking to draw from, you have to look back to what your objective was. So if our objective was to validate what we were flowing out of these pre-connected lines, and we had someone that was working off of the engine pressure gauge, this 15 PSI loss equates to a loss of flow. So rather than flowing 160 gallons a minute, if we weren't flow testing and identifying this loss, we'd only be flowing 135 gallons a minute. We'd be under pumping our 50 PSI tip objective by 15 pounds. The NFPA 1962 standard gives us a simple template approach that can accomplish many objectives. If we were looking to do a complete NFPA 1962 test of the rig, we would gather this information for every discharge. If we're utilizing this approach for a hose and nozzle evaluation, it would bring it down to the point where we would have an obvious recommendation. If we were using it to validate discharge flow on every discharge, we'd have the ability to capture our plumbing loss and identify that we're not flowing what we may think we're flowing. Utilize the standard based on what your objectives are, and it'll bring you to the information that you need to make a decision if it's needed.